peeping. Peeping. I'm peeping over the edge. Uh, that's where there's probably used to be a stream or something that came out. Look at all the crystals in there. They're like microscopic, but they shine like fucking crazy. Gotta pee. You got me fucked up in the game. I drink a giant cup of coffee very quickly. Oh my god, don't leave me with the giant fucking dragon hole. Okay, I'll be okay. I'm okay with it. It's cool up here though. My butt crack's showing and everything. Can you actually sit in there? Yeah. I'm telling you though, if you ever were homeless and came through here, this would be like the perfect area. To be in. I just lost the cigarette to the ground. You say this would be the perfect place to be in? Yeah. Kind of creepy. I mean, you got a little place. Yeah. You got a little place over here to the side, and it's completely oblivious to the wind and all that. I would like use that little hole as my toilet. The little dragon hole. You can actually buy caves. Can you? Yeah, you can buy caves. How do you do, how do you go about that?
I don't know, but they sell them. My, my stepdad used to look into it. Yeah. He's really big about this area, though, and all the Hey everybody, how are you doing? This guy here to come to Mount State Park had planned to, uh, there we go, had planned to do a little filming today because um, it was, you know, it's kind of overcast today. It's, it was a little foggy earlier, but it looks like it's lifted up a bit, at least here. Um, I was going to do a little filming today, uh, do a little experimentation with uh, stuff, uh, you know, natural things around here, seeing what I can do with the camera lens. And, you know, I was going to eat over here at the Homestead Harvest restaurant. And it's currently exactly 11 o'clock uh, Central Time here. And, uh, goddamn, I sound like a goddamn Southerner. Um, anyway, and that's supposed to be when they open. But it looks like there's doing some, uh, there's some roof work going on and um, there's nobody here it looks like I haven't tried going in yet but there are no there's like one car in the parking lot and I think that's part of the construction crew whoever's working on the roof and I don't know I may go here in a minute and see what's going on here let me show you this see there got some tape and stuff with flags up on top Got a trailer, dumpster, they just got some overall equipment. One car here, I think belongs to one of the workers who's working on the roof. And you get one of the, barely see it, but you get one of the uh, ranger trucks over there behind the trailer. Yeah, it's a little chilly here. I'm, I got these overalls on. First, uh... About these overalls like Goodwill about six, seven years ago, something like that. Maybe not even that long, but um, it's gonna be a good old time. Good. Yeah, this is pretty lame. The restaurant's closed. They'll be closed till the fifteenth, which is in two days from me filming this today. So, we'll go over to the bridge area where I found that stork before that I filmed. And we'll go down that trail there and see what we can get into. hoping to catch um, I was hoping to catch that great blue heron out here again today because compared to the time of year it is even though Tennessee usually has kind of mild winters it may have flown off for a while All right, everybody. The uh, trail behind the bridge there, I didn't go too far down that. Um, honestly, it was because I just kind of got out of the spirit of that trail. Uh, it's partially due to the fact that really there was nothing going on down that trail that I hadn't filmed before. And plus, before I got to the park today, I had some of that cheap gas station vanilla, fr uh, 
French vanilla coffee and it was really starting to work its magic and and I wasn't too far from a bathroom so I was like well I gotta go take care of this but anyway I'm going down a different trail right now and we're gonna film a little bit down here and then I got one more place I'm gonna try to stop at before we leave the park today so just keep in tune for that got this new uh, trail marker here on the Pioneer Short Loop Trail telling people uh, in case of emergency uh, tell the 911 dispatcher your location is Pioneer, Pioneer, Pioneer Short Loop marker number 302 Cut myself up a little bit. Got in a briar patch. There's a there's an area uh, on a side trail on the main trail I'm on that you can go up, and it's next to a golf course here in Crossville. And if you go in this little area, you can find golf balls that have been hit over that way, and that have just been left there. And sometimes I'll go up there and collect golf balls but they're all in briar patches, and it's kind of thick. There's a couple up there that I saw that I couldn't get because the patches were too thick, but I'll show them to you here. As you can see here, I managed to get quite a few of them. Um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. In I even found the tee over there that I was able to grab. I'm not much of a golfer myself, but it's still fun to uh, collect these. And sometimes I'll paint a couple up every now and then, and sometimes I'll uh, I'll donate them to uh, one of the local thrift stores because you'll find a lot of golf balls for pretty cheap at thrift stores. So sometimes I'll donate them to those. But yeah, it's a pretty cool find. We got Titleized here. We got some Titleized. Uh, Callaway. Uh, Top Flight. Uh, we got one Opal here. It's a Nike one, also. And those are the main brands of what I was able to find. It's pretty cool. Okay. I know there wasn't a whole lot to this episode, but I'm going to show you one more spot that I wanted to show last time I was here. That's right. They have an aviary for hurt birds that they take care of. We're gonna go to that real quick. There was one point in the summer of 2012 that you can't see them here but there's some campgrounds over that way that I lived at the campgrounds for two weeks out of a tent during a transition between uh, residences and every day during those two weeks I come to this camp store and get an orange cream popsicle it's actually pretty nice not the ideal situation but it's actually kind of nice couple signs you got one over there yeah one over here looks like they got some of these tarps pulled down to help protect the birds from the rain let's go over and look at it American kestrel let's see if we can see it in here it's kind of hard to see through this oh hello well, hello. Gonna get right there. He's hanging on if you can see him. Now, sometimes they'll put on shows with these birds, educating people on how they got hurt 
what the population is stuff like that whoa there's a good shot and like I said it's hard to see through this wire this metal fence they've got going they've got one for the barn owl uh, feeding behavior barn owls hunt at night seldom at day they seek they put seeks here but it should be seek Prey mostly by flying low over open ground, watching and listening. Sometimes hunts by flying down from a perch. They have excellent vision and low light levels. And hearing is so precise that it can strike prey in total darkness. Barn owl's diet is mostly rodents. They feed heavily on voles, which are like moles but smaller. Also takes various kinds of mice, small rats, shrews, young rabbits, and other mammals. They eat very small numbers of birds, lizards, insects, rarely, rarely frogs, or even fish. So I can't see it in here. It's probably, there's a little box right up in there. It's probably in. There's another box over here. It's probably in. Um, let me twist this around here. Um, I actually went to a show a couple times about these birds. And I think what they were talking about once was that this uh, this owl, this barn owl, actually got hit by a truck, um, and it is blind, and one eye had crushed its skull on one side of its head. It actually destroyed part of its skull to where it uh, damaged a nerve that goes to its eye on one side, and it's blind in one side, so it's harder for it to hunt on its own. So when they rescued it, they kept it here, and. Um, it's it's a pretty good thing whenever you have um, state parks or other uh, natural areas, even if they're run by government or, uh, government organizations. Not like our government's doing much good now, because uh, Donald Trump wants to act like a, uh, blah, 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 I'm getting stutters going on. <laughs> Donald Trump wants to act like a goddamn baby, and have the government shut down and put eighty thousand people out of their jobs because he wants to build a wall. That's not going to do anything. Or and even if they did build it, it won't have any effect um, which I think people should be able to immigrate here and stuff like that I just think he is a complete fucking child but anyway but anyway we're not here to talk about my political views we're here to talk about this park so um, it's pretty cool but in addition to that sorry about this whole camera thing um, some parks will have things like this Donate and feed a bird. Donate to that. And if you see any sort of donation thing going on at a state park, um, donate to it because it's going to help out. So put money in those. I have before multiple times. Five dollars, a couple times, ten dollars. If I have a few ones hanging out, I'll put them in there. So donate to stuff like that. They also have one for a barred owl, and once again, I think their barred owl is hiding out, because even though it would be hard for you to see, I think uh, I don't see him anywhere, and I think he's hanging out in his little box in there, so you can kind of see it. There you go. It's probably hiding out in there. Last but not least, they have a red-tailed hawk in here, which will be hard for you to see, but I can actually see him right now, so let me try to get a shot real quick. I can see him, but you can't see him. He's actually in the back corner up in there. I've heard him shuffling around, and he's not wanting to come down. So, it's, uh, it's really good they have things like this where they can put birds in sanctuary that wouldn't be able to survive out in the wild on their own due to collisions with us. It's really good they have things like this. And like I said before, if you can donate to stuff like this, things like this, state parks, little things they have like this to help feed the birds, um, bring in food to feed the birds, stuff like that, um, go hunt down food, etc., etc., donate to it. Because the government's not going to and they feel like we owe them something but really it's the government that owes us quite a bit um, there are employees remember that 
So let me show you the sign real quick and then we'll get off of here. Uh, one thing I fail, failed to mention is, I'm not just saying this, well I'm partially saying this because of the sign, but they also have an American Bald Eagle that they have that they help shelter and they bring into the shows. And you can also compare your arm span to the wingspan of the birds, average wingspan of the birds here, so which is pretty cool. And then I also have, um, it goes up to six feet, which is about what the average bald eagle's wingspan is. And they have the, uh, a printed out foot size here. So it's pretty cool. So the American bald eagle foot on average is actually bigger than my hand. Not by much, but it is. So that thing could just, uh, size of its foot and they actually have pretty good sized talons that sign doesn't do it justice but they have a uh, pretty good sized talons I could tear you the tear you up pretty good so I hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe we'll do something like this again soon thanks for joining me peace out